This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Good afternoon. This is Ray Tsuchiyama on a slightly cool Thursday afternoon in Honolulu, Hawaii. This show is entitled Hawaii from Afar, and we have guests representing the millennial population in the world. And they're from a college in Washington State, and it's a place that's uh, just before the Canadian border, about 80 miles north of Seattle. And I'm advising this group uh, from Western Washington University under the leadership of Professor Patrick Buckley of the Huxley College, which is the Environmental Studies Center for Western Washington University. And the reason why I'm kind of connected with all this is because I graduated from Western many, many years ago. And it's an honor to be advising this group who have, who have come to Hawaii to kind of study it and uh, kind of um, think about issues, policies, history, culture. And so I'm going to introduce one by one. And uh, to my left, go ahead, your name and your major and your year. Aloha. Uh, my name is Ke Xing Zhen. Um, I'm a junior in Western Washington University, and my major is sociology. Great. And then the second, go ahead, in the middle. Aiden Neveller. I'm a graduate student at Western Washington with a focus on energy, and I'm studying environmental studies. Terrific. And the third? Uh, my name is Alifair Noreen, and I am a freshman at Western Washington University, and my major will be, when I declare it, environmental science. That's great. So we have three students out of a group of about eight or nine students. And they have spent a very hectic week studying all facets of Hawaii under the rubric of what we would call um, sustainability, under the categories of economics, environment, and culture. But why Hawaii? Uh, have you ever been to Hawaii? And why did you uh, uh, join this study group? Kirshen. Um, yeah, so I've never been to Hawaii before, so this is my first time. Um, so sustainability, I feel like, is a very big word or concept that we always mention or say it. But actually, for me, it's pretty vague, and I don't actually know what are some of the practical ways like to function it um, in this society, I guess. So yeah, and Hawaii, as I know, is one of the isolated places, and it highly requires sustainability. Um, so that's why I'm here. I want to learn how it can function um, in sustainability. Yeah. Great. And uh, why did you choose to do, come to Hawaii? And, and have you been here before? <laughs> as a kid, yeah, I've been to Hawaii once or twice with my parents' trips. And uh, as I mentioned before, my passion is in energy. And so one of the great things Hawaii illustrates is how to work with uh, different constraints in terms of energy. You know, high demand for electricity, not connected to other regional areas. Hawaii is a great example of how to rework your grid to work in a modern world. Perfect. Alifair, why Hawaii? Um, I've been to Hawaii a few times with my parents. We've been on Maui. And, uh, and other than that, I guess the trip was really almost personal for me because I grew up on a small island just off the coast of Washington, oh. um, San Juan Island. Oh, yeah. And so coming to Hawaii was like just a little bit of a step further away. And, uh, and they need sustainability practices a little bit more. And, and so it's kind of a personal thing for me. Well, all islands are the same <laughs> with similar problems. Um, so uh, you've been to many, many um, meetings and places ranging from the Hawaii Mission, um, uh, the um, uh, 19th century houses uh, near downtown, to a visit to the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, to uh, the State Energy Office, to um, Outrigger Hotel. So you've been a, a range of places. There must have been one that must have been very memorable and gave you some insights. Uh, Alifair, which, which one was the most um, uh, fascinating and gave you an aha moment? Uh, personally, for me, it was when we went out to the fish pond, the traditional fish pond out on the North Shore. Um, just getting to see the culture and the history that goes into that, as well as it's a current 
sort of a sustainability thing. And, and it was really neat to see people getting their hands in the land and, and working with it. When you say hands on the land, what did you do? Uh, we actually, the nine of us, picked up shovels and buckets and we helped shovel sand out of one of their streams that they have. So there was a connection to what you've been also studying about the Hawaiian history and culture. Um, and did it give you any hints about the future? Um, yeah, a bit. Um, it was really nice to have a little bit of, of guidance on where they want to go with the future. And they were talking about the invasive fish species and wanting to eradicate those while still keeping some of the mm. fish that they like and, and having sustainable practices for that. So it's a bridge from the past to the present to the future. Absolutely. Aiden, give me a visit that you had an aha moment and, and kind of linked it to your own studies about energy. Right. The visit, I have to say, that most sticks in my mind was not directly linked to energy, actually. It was linked to culture. And that was when we went to the mausoleum for King Kamehameha. And just walking around that picturesque area, you look and you kind of think back to yourself, the effect one life can have. You know, uniting the islands and just seeing the great respect and the great care that has been put into place, remembering him. And that was one of the impactful moments. We came off that earlier this afternoon, and it was a good day to look through it. Um, in your life, though, have you studied history or, or have an interest in history? Yeah. I mean, of course, we all go through history classes in high school, middle school, elementary. But from time to time, you read Guns, Germs, and Steel by Jared Diamond and other famous history novels. I mean, again, I'm referencing the more mechanical energy history there, but yeah. So it gave you a, 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 a I guess, a, a living experience that, that you could sense. Uh, uh, Kirshen, how about yourself? Uh, what visit did you personally felt most memorable in Hawaii? Um, so I'm a big cultural person. Oh. Um, so I really loved the visit at the Hawaiian Affair Office. Oh, okay. um, yeah, so the speaker basically talk about what's the cultural, like, or spiritual practices, like, in Hawaii, like, cultural. And, yeah, and I just love how he introduced the aloha spirit, which just carries, like, it's just re really welcoming. And, yeah, they do all kinds of, like, spiritual practices with different gods. And I think that's really good because... Yeah, like once you have the gods and you just have the respect for them and you have the respect for the nature. And yeah, I think that's just something that's really unique in Hawaii. Yeah. Now, when you came to West, how many years have you spent living in the U.S. now, United States? Um, this is my fourth year. Okay, so four years you've been exposed to American culture, right. people, history, all kinds of things. So, And then you came to Hawaii, right? right. And Hawaii is part is the 50th state. We are part of the U.S. Right. Are there things that you saw that made you um, become startled and think, oh, uh, although you're here, it reminds you of somewhere else or uh, it's, it's uh, not so American? Anything? Actually, yeah. Actually, I think the streets oh. and the way the building are laid out oh. is really similar to China. And oh. I'm from China, by <laughs> yeah. the way. Oh. So yeah, because I think because it's such a small island, so people need to be like together. Like, oh. So yeah. You that mean way it, it's, it's, really... it's uh, people live closer together and right. more, it's more and streets and people mm -hmm. and cars and buses more congested. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, okay. exactly. I, I never thought of that. Uh, but uh, you're correct that, uh, you know, on this island, uh, there's 950,000 people. Yeah. <laughs> but you're, you're correct. Um, so, Alec, back to you. Mm -hmm. uh, you um, so. Is there anything that you can take back uh, as you're going forward to your studies from your experience in Hawaii that you said, Aha, I could apply this in my studies in, in some way? Is there anything? Um, definitely, probably like Sherry was saying, um, with just sort of the, the general practice of the aloha spirit and being more friendly and more open with people and, uh, and I guess just really taking care of your family and, and caring for for the land and for the people. I really thought that that made a lot of impact on me as a person, and, and it really makes sense, so. 
Now you lived, you said, uh, you grew up on, on in the San Juan Islands, which mm -hmm. I'm familiar with, and um, and the beautiful islands out there. Thank Very you. cold though. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, <laughs> and and you're uh, going to school in in, um, in Northwest, and of course you're exposed to many cultures in in uh, Washington State. Is there anything that you see back in Seattle, Bellingham, San Juan's that you said, oh, this could be a benefit to the people in Hawaii? Anything? Um. Personally, I am a fan of the Bellingham transportation system, oh. the, the bus system. Yeah. Um, I wish they'd run more on time, but that's, that's their own problem. Um, I, I think that, that some of the transportation aspects could be used in Honolulu, um, just a little bit more of a, of a bus system that might be more sustainable. But then again, I mean, it varies from city to city what you can do. So I'm not entirely sure that there's anything that I would bring back from from the islands or from Bellingham to to each other. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> but you but you said you would bring back uh, your experiences uh, dealing with Oahu, with family and culture and history, back to uh, back to your, uh, where you grew up or, or in, in back in Bellingham. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. That's that's really meaningful to me. That's really personal. So, Aiden, how about yourself? Uh, you study about energy. You mm -hmm. saw you uh, met people involved in energy. We're trying to deal with energy in a state that imports oil uh, for yeah. our electricity and has very high prices, and um, we need air conditioning and, and you know CDs and <laughs> and, and uh, iPhones to power. Any takeaways that you could bring from the U.S. or bringing things from Hawaii back to? Uh, uh, to, uh, to the mainland. Right. Well, I mean, my thoughts on the constraints of an island. I mean, it's so hard to get energy to ship in the oil or to produce it here that people have to change their behavior and change strategies when they're doing it. For example, mm -hmm. there's a high price of electricity in Hawaii, and so one of the negatives is that's costing people more, but it's helping people install solar arrays in their house because it's a better justification for them to change their strategy up. When the cost of electricity is high, you know, it makes people seriously consider other alternatives. And so that's, it's a way people have been dealing with constraint. And it's, it's interesting to see just how people are solving these problems on the island. Is there anything that you saw specific that you could uh, say uh, this is uh, something that you could uh, uh, benefit Hawaii at all? Anything? Uh, from Washington, a lot of what we do is we talk to the people first. So with the solar campaigns we have in Bellingham is the first thing they do is they stop by the local church or they call oh. the mayor or they find local leaders in the community. And that is such an applicable thing to the islands here, because it's all about the people. And so if you're going to make any sort of change in society, you can't just do it with economics. You can't just do it with policy. You can't just do it with people alone. It's kind of a mix of all three. And so seeing you know, ways that you could reach out, talk to people first, start a conversation, make sure it's slow, deliberate, and appropriate for all measures is one of the things that works both in Washington and Hawaii. So you see uh, people are the same. <laughs> they, yeah. they have to change their behavior, but in order to do that, you have to work with them. Yep. You know, that, that's, that, that's the bottom line. Uh, it's not just engineering or technology. Uh, Christian, if you're going to uh, package what you experienced in this week and you went back to, to, uh, to China and to talk to your family and friends, what would they feel would be the most interesting or uh, unusual if they heard your stories to them? Um, I think I've seen many institutions or companies that's working, well, like their business, but they're working in such a environmental or cultural friendly way. And I think that's something I don't see that often in oh. China. Um, because like we are still a developing country, like we're really pressing on to like increasing the econ economy. Right. So yeah, I just wish that there would be more business would be right. business like like in Hawaii. We'll, we'll which, go back to that point oh, yeah. after we take this break and okay, we'll cool. be back to uh, develop this story more about the experiences of three students from afar in Hawaii. Welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, where we motivate, educate, empower, and inspire all women. We are live here every other Thursday at 4 p.m., and we welcome you to join us here at Sister Power. Aloha and thank you. Aloha, I'm Kili'i Akina, and I'm here every other week on Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii together. 
In Hawaii Together, we talk with some of the most fascinating people in the islands about working together, working together for a better economy, government, and society. So I invite you into our conversation every other Monday at 2 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. Join us for Hawaii Together. I'm Kili'i Akina. Aloha. Welcome back to this very insightful show with three young people on their experiences during a very hectic, meeting-filled visit to Hawaii as a collection of islands in the middle of the Pacific. And they're here from the great Northwest and the mainland and applying what they kind of been studying to the issues and uh, about Hawaii in the environment, culture, and economics. And we were just talking to Kershing about about what she would bring back or, or uh, th talk about more with her family and friends back in China. And uh, you have a very in interesting point in that um, for the last, uh, you know, so many decades, uh, starting with Deng Xiaoping, I mean, uh, economy first right, and everything else second. <laughs> and you're correct that many people are waking up to uh, issues about environmental pollution, right. mm -hmm. to uh, how to plan for the future in city planning uh, about China. Is, uh, now, when you look at your own life, are you going back to China or staying in the U.S. or going someplace? What, 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 what would you ideally want to do? Um, for my future, so after I graduate right. from Western right. Washington University. I'm going to law school, oh. probably studying international laws. And I think I will be working with refugees in Middle East. That's oh. my current goal. Um, probably in like immigration status and how, like to help them with that kind of, yeah, like policy. -wise. Now, have you ever traveled to the Middle East? Um, not yet, and, oh. but I will be next. Next year. Oh, yeah. that's, that's terrific. Uh, Ali Fair, so looking forward from your trip to Hawaii, um, is there, uh, uh, what do you hope to do in the, in the future? Uh, I know that you're studying environmental studies. Uh, what, what do you see yourself doing um, after college that uh, this experience may be a benefit or uh, you know, what role do you think that you can play in society? Yeah, so I am hoping to go on to study global climate change and working with that. I'm looking to do it in sort of a marine biology aspect. Um, actually, environmental science is sort of a pathway to that for me. Um, but currently, I've been working for the University of Washington and their Friday Harbor Labs doing ocean acidification research. And so I'm looking to continue that and working with um, other companies that are doing sustainability factors and whatnot um, in order to help the oceans pollution issue and, uh, and ultimately get at global climate change. I think that's a great, uh, huge project, as you know, but uh, of course, what's happening in Hawaii, you've probably seen the news reports on erosion recently, uh, and rising seas also um, uh, with, uh, with fisheries uh, under attack uh, in our surrounding waters. So the ocean is, is uh, very much a very sensitive area for, for Hawaii. But you have a very good point about, uh, you know, uh, researching about the oceans. Uh, I, I, I think in the end, though, it's not only about the science, but understanding what to do in policy. You know, uh, what are you going to do to mitigate what's happening in oceans? Have you thought of that? If you have the scientific answers or research, how do you influence people to change their ways or government policies in the future? That's a hard one, because unless people are given a real incentive to change, they won't. Um, change is very hard to, to instigate. And so I personally have thought about going into environmental policy and, and looking at that route, but I don't think that's for me. I don't think I, don't think I could hold it together enough to do it without getting too argumentative. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm just looking to get at the science of it and, uh, and hopefully find somebody that I can ally with in the environmental policy world. Um, but personally, I will never go that route. <laughs> 
So you uh, are focused on the science of yes. global climate change. Great. So Aiden, uh, how about yourself? Uh, what do you see yourself? I know you're in graduate school. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you uh, see uh, an outcome of your graduate studies? Where, where are you leading into with, uh, with uh, what you're doing? Right. Well, with my studies, I'm focusing on demand side management for electric grid. So think smart meeting, think energy efficiency. So I have a policy background, and that's kind of where I'm hoping to lean for. I've worked for the city of Bellingham in the past, and I'm hoping to do something where I can work as part of the city or another institution and just sort of figure out new ways to lower energy bills, make things run a little bit cleaner, a little bit greener, anything you do to improve the system. And we spoke to one of the residents here who had a uh, control system, and one of the things that he talked about was instead of going to every resident individually, he went to the landlords, the property owners, and got whole batches at once. And that is a super applicable system because that change, I mean, not only offers you know, uh, benefits to the landlords who reduce their costs, but it helps a lot more people at the same time by improving their lives with smart control. And that's something I kind of want to think about in telling you, because one of the problems we have there is helping residents lower their energy bills, mm -hmm. especially when it's cold out right, like right now. So, um, so, Kirsten, you're, you're going to um, uh, working with uh, refugees and law and so forth. Uh, you must have been um, uh, fascinated by our ethnic diversity in, in Hawaii, right. uh, which is quite unusual than the rest of the United States. We have everybody, and everybody's a minority, <laughs> in a sense. But we all have to live with each other in, in, in many ways. Uh, and so um, uh, one of my questions is, um, do you see uh, Hawaii as a great experiment or a great model, how people can live together in a positive, happy way? Way? Or you see, uh, are there any other ways to, so that the uh, society could be made better through better governance or better uh, leadership? Um, I think, unfortunately, I probably wouldn't, like, I am not able to answer that question because I, for me personally, I don't think I have investigated too much study in Hawaii communities. So I haven't really like looked in, into that. And yeah, so I actually don't know. But yeah. Good answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Hawaii is quite unusual, because yeah. um, as, you, as you know, uh, we are island, and we have to live with each other, 1.2 million people. And we are crammed on this island, and, right. and we have to deal with each other and really develop a, a better, um, uh, better society. And, and uh, we don't have any resources to do that. And everything that we do has a resource have to be imported mm -hmm. from the outside. Um, so so uh, going Going back to um, uh, Alifair, um, uh, you have uh, a, a goal uh, uh, stretching out. Uh, anything about Hawaii that um, was um, very unfamiliar to you that, that, that you saw and said, wow, this is very unusual, although you come from an island background and you see some you know, uh, analogous things about people living on an island have to deal with a, with a, a small space. Uh, uh, surrounded by water. But there was something unusual. It says, wow, uh, I, I, I had never seen this kind of thing before. Anything uh, touch you in that way? Um, probably just the hugeness of it all. Oh. Um, the, the mass population in, on Oahu, in Honolulu, um, that is something that I'm unfamiliar with on oh. an island. Um, at back home, we are a population of probably 7,000. Mm -hmm. And so it's very small, small very rural. And, uh, and that's not something I saw staying in the city, obviously. And so that was really interesting to see the impacts of the mass tourism that's here, as well as just how many people live here and, and go about their daily lives. That was kind of unfamiliar to me. Well, that's interesting, uh, because um, uh, it, it, there's an old adage, uh, hell is other people. <laughs> <laughs> we, but we have to live with each other and kind of deal with each other. We have to hide our thoughts a lot, our emotions. Uh, Aiden, so uh, energy. Energy yeah. seems to be your uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, mind all the time. Oh, you got uh, me. So, so um, uh, you know, it, it, was there anything in Hawaii uh, that you saw as very precarious? Wow, we're living in a place that uh, it will uh, be impacted by uh, uh, an event, uh, you, know, um, mm -hmm. you know, I would never say this, but Puerto Rico's experience. Many people in Hawaii are looking at that from afar and say, wow, that could be us. Yeah. 
And that's the scary thought. You miss one shipment of oil, suddenly your peaker plants on the island have a little bit of trouble and there's some uncertainty. But I mean, we looked at examples in the island of Kauai, I think, where they had solar arrays and battery pack installations. And they showed just how one would balance the other and how together, you know, in unison with some controls, they could solve a lot of the island's energy need, kind of balance the system on their own without the need of those oil shipments. So that was an inspirational thing just to hear about. And, you know, I think it's precarious everywhere. Every single place you are, there's different challenges. I mean, we're worried about Mount St. Helens in Washington right. State. There could be a tsunami anywhere else. And so, yeah, the Cascadia. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Great earthquake in the future. You're right. There was always this. Uh, right. Cushing, uh, you had a very interesting point, uh, uh, two questions ago, about, uh, about uh, you know, environmental kind of uh, studies or concerns and issues that perhaps uh, Hawaii could play a, play a role in China that it could, uh, uh, if so, what would that be? And I'll just give you some examples. Uh, like, for example, uh, could there be an area in, in China in, in, uh, for business or government for, to teach about tourism? That's number one. People are traveling all over China now. People going outside within China, they're traveling for the first time and going uh, all kinds of places, number one. And number two, maybe uh, Hawaii could uh, be a, a role model or could teach uh, or uh, could be a bridge or talk to people about you know, energy, about, uh, about environment, um, and so forth. Any, any thoughts to that? Are there things from Hawaii that could be uh, programs started in China in some way? Um, I think Hawaii could definitely be a model for Chinese business. Um, Hawaii could definitely teach Chinese companies to like um, to teach them how to be environmental friendly. I think that's really important. Um, the other way is I think Hawaii is leading, like many ways, in renewable energy techniques, and I think Chinese government can definitely work with one of the company, like the Solar City. Yeah. I think they could definitely cooperate together and just learn from Solar City's technology. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful to hear because uh, so many times we think ourselves just of ourselves <laughs> with not much to to kind of uh, export out but uh, but this 30-minute uh, uh, session I think will give people in Hawaii a great uh, great insights to how uh, people from the outside from afar look at Hawaii and see a positive in what we do and how we go about the business and for the future our state and I want to thank all all three of you uh, for your time on the show and this is Think Tech Hawaii uh, looking at Hawaii from afar, from a young viewpoint, that's very exciting and provocative and gives the guides to us for our future. Thank you very much.